We're back in the armory and in today's video, we're tackling the challenge of making a tea steak. It is about making a steak that's probably the most important in the craft of armory. So what is a tea steak? Well, essentially it's any steak that forms this sort of T shape, obviously, but it has two main important parts. Number one is the support that has a taper or a spike on the end of it that enables it to just slip on into the stump or the stand that we're gonna be working against. And number two, it has a working surface, a bar that extends perpendicular to that support. Fundamentally, it has to have a radius or profile end for us to work the steel around. Now this particular steak isn't so good at that job because it's got sharp edges and it's designed for a completely different purpose. But ours is gonna have that rounded shape on the end. Now, what is raising, you might be asking? Well, essentially it is the most important and widely used skill for armorers back in the day as well as today. It enables the armorer to take a piece of steel and sculpt it into those sexy curves and complex shapes in a suit of armor, as well as matching it to the anatomy and the shape of the human body. Now in our series and on our channel, we haven't done any projects as of yet that use this raising process, but any real armorer or any true armorer needs to master this skill. And so we're gonna be using our tea steak that we make in this video to tackle some of those challenges that are coming up very shortly. All right, so we're heading off to grab some materials for our tea steak, primarily that big top piece of steel that we're gonna shape for raising. Now today we've got a bit of a treat because we're heading over to Red Heart Reproductions where I work as an apprentice four days a week under Luke Binks, who's an armorer and jouster here in Queensland. And we have a saw over there that's gonna help us cut that piece of steel and get what we need for our job. So let's go meet the man himself. The tool that we're using to cut our steel is a horizontal cold cut bandsaw and it's really good for cutting through that solid thick material which beats an angle grinder a thousand times over because you don't have all those sparks and all that hot crappy mess that comes with it. Okay so we've just got our steel being cut over there but what is the actual crucial nature of this steak in the process of armoring? Well, the beauty of the tea steak is that being a horizontal surface, it allows you to impart a lot more energy with your blows um, into a piece while allowing depth for something such as a helmet to get all the way into the top and allow you to easily apply force while you're raising or shaping your piece. So the tea steak can be quite a pivotal piece when it comes to doing something that usually has a bit of depth to it, whether that's an arm, a leg or a helmet. It's yep. a really quite a vital piece. Especially for making those deeper shapes in the process. Precisely. I can see there's still a little bit of a souvenir from uh, another time. Yep. I wonder who put that there. <laughs> That's what you get when apprentices are drooling on your tea steak. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Hello. And the steel is in the workshop. Now, we need to whack on some radius, actually, radii. We need to whack on some radii onto this piece of steel on this half of the top of the tea stake. Just gonna take a measurement of halfway, take down the sides, and then round off the end. That way, when we're raising on it, it'll present a nice rounded surface for us to work across, and it can be helpful to have something that's rounded when you're making bends and things and everything like that. This side of the stake, we're gonna keep the way it is. We might put a bit of a polish on it, but having that radius is good for when we're turning an edge to 90 degrees or trying to do something where we don't want a sharp extreme edge. So we've got, we've got options, let's say, in this thing, and that's really good.
What I should have mentioned earlier is the material that we're using for our the top of our tea stag. This is actually 50 by 50 millimeters of 1045, which is excellent for making hammers, sort of like you know what a stake is going to be used for, which is going to be hammered on, it's going to be pretty much abused and used. So we want to make sure that it's going to stand up to that. Now that we've hogged off most of the material with the 7 inch angle grinder, we can jump on over to the belt grinder just to smooth out those profiles and make sure it has all the nice sexy curves that we need for when we're making armour. Whew. Man, that's a workout. She's a heavy beast. But she's done. Looking nice and shiny, and she's gonna get all uh, covered in hammer marks anyway, so this is the sexiest she's gonna get. Now we grab some steel and forge up the base piece. So normally I could draw this down by myself, except that a power hammer would really come in handy to draw this down, except that I don't have a power hammer. So instead, I'm going to be using the Kurt Meister 5000. My little bro, Kurt, or my big little bro now, he was alongside me way back in the day when we started making armor. He's been alongside me ever since. These days he does other things, but we wouldn't be here in the workshop without him. Luckily for me today, he's here to swing this sledgehammer and get this steel drawn down. And let's get stuck into it. My calluses are hurting. <laughs> that's the only thing that's hurting. Uh. Whereas everything is hurting. <laughs> We've drawn down our base piece and forged in our taper, and you've just seen me tack it all together. Now, before we put in the proper welds to hold it all together, there's two things to take into consideration. Number one is the 45 degree bevels, which are ground all the way around the top of this piece. The second thing is to give this a preheat. That lets the weld burn in and wet deeply into the steel, ensuring we get maximum penetration so these bad boys never come apart. Well, that's another project complete. Another tool joins the collection. And while it's not the most complex of stakes, or even that complex of a blacksmithing job, it was a great opportunity to try out some new things and just practice forging some big stock once again. And yes, it is a little bit higher than what I expected it to be. But that's going to be alright because we're going to be making a stand for all the stakes 
very shortly. We drew down that base piece, which was a bit of effort. We needed to get the Kurt Meister 5000 in to pull that one off. But now it's all together, and that's gonna let us tackle some of the more complex jobs in armoring and actually get into some of the stuff that's really interesting in the art and craft of armoring. And the best part about it is, there's no hole in the end. Sorry, Luke. So stay tuned for some more content coming out. Leave a like and a subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and we'll see you in the next video.